No, with the with these Cowboys, Jerry Jones came on these very airwaves and basically laid it out that if there was going to be a trade as at this nearing trade deadline, the trade would have to come to the Cowboys. The Cowboys would not go looking for it. And I know that that caused a lot of uproar in Cowboys Nation. How did you hear those comments? How did those sound to you for a team in the Cowboys that feel like they're underachieving? Here's the thing, and and here's what I worry about in terms of trading for what you've seen from the Cowboys for the six weeks that they've played, not including the bye week, obviously. But what worries me is, yes, you can make a splash trade and you can get a really good trade going still. There's still some guys out there that I think can be a great addition to this roster. However, the problem is the utilization because you already have weapons, especially on your offensive side of the ball, Brandon Cooks, that's barely getting utilized in week six of the season. You have a guy like CeeDee Lamb who's been producing, but not enough, right? So you have all of this. You have your full loaded running back room that the usage and the distribution just has not been there. So for me, when Jerry came on to say that they're actively not going to look for something, I mean, it's Jerry. I wasn't too surprised by it. I, I think um, I did appreciate his, you know, task and saying we're not going to make a move just to be risky about it. I think, good, you shouldn't. You shouldn't do something just to be risky. Do it to be smart. So if they're going to have an addition to actually use, that's one thing. But then again, you don't, you haven't seen really a fair usage of any player across the board for the Cowboys for the last six weeks that they've played. So I don't know, guys. All I know is that that trade deadline is looming and uh, we'll see what happens. Jess, when you look at this team now through its first six games, four and two, still have its goals in front of them, what was your biggest takeaway from the first six games of this season as they get ready to take on the Rams that you want to see continue for this team for the rest of the year? Well, what I want to see continue is what you saw in the Chargers game of week six, which was uh, a mixture of things that you've needed to see, and they're still not perfect. I want to see that continue to be the starting line. So, for example, a mobile Dak Prescott – not saying he needs to do it all the time, but when he should do it, it should be an unpredictable part of his game. And so I think that's what makes it a strong aspect of his, is that he's not a running quarterback. He's not a mobile guy. That's okay, but use it if you can, and don't overuse it either. So I liked uh, Dak's usage of legs. I think everyone can agree that the Cowboys just play better overall in that aspect. I think something else that is boding well for them, well, hello, C.D. Lamb. Hello, wide receiver one. Thank you for entering the chat continue to get him more production as well on the offensive side of the ball. Defensive side, I think things are starting to come together. I think the run game, uh, unfortunately, with LVE out, you're not really going to get a good gauge on how they're doing in the run game uh, just yet until a couple weeks have passed because that's kind of what happened last season after he went out with that next dinger. Um, but, look, you're a four and 4-2 team. You can't really say much. Yes, the two losses that they had, they were upsets, right? But – bouncing back you're healthy and I think that's the biggest thing other than that it's it's really what they decide to do with it at this point we're talking to Jess Navarez she works for Pro Football Network covering the Cowboys right here on 105 through the fan and Jess um, it sounded like uh, from what you were talking about with utilization that you might agree with my um, kind of thoughts on this offense right now but let me ask it ex explicitly are, are you satisfied with the entirety of the Mike McCarthy Texas Coast system as it pertains to these Cowboys? I mean, honestly, I, I don't think you know what that is yet exactly because you haven't seen a consistent Texas Coast offense for the last six times that these guys have gotten together and played. And a large part of that is you have only had a healthy offensive line, starting offensive line, for the last three weeks that have been able to practice together. So really that's the domino effect going to trickle down in all aspects of your game you go back to the run game why hasn't it been established well if you don't have a healthy and cohesive o-line that's just not going to happen right so as far as what you've seen from Mike McCarthy's offense I like glimpses of it but there's also work that needs to be done one of the biggest things for me is getting that tight end room involved in the passing game yes they've been great in blocking they've done their due diligence in blocking and I think that's a large coast of uh, you know west coast offensive style but get them more involved in that. Uh, and for me, too, ball distribution between the running backs, right? You had a one-two punch that worked last season and the season before that, before that was even what it was called with Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard. Now you have a healthy Rico Dowdle that's physical, he's fast, and he's speedy. And why haven't we seen more of him, right? So I think there's glimpses of what it can be. 
But, you know, if this is the starting point from what you're going to see it expand to, I'm okay with that. Because personally, I'm okay with seeing the Cowboys kind of take their time to progress up until this point and not peak out and top out like you're going to start to see with some of the other top teams, which is just kind of the natural cycle of football. Jess, what's been the conversation as the Cowboys get ready for the Rams that is on your top of the mind most? Oh, man. I, uh, hmm. That's a good one. That's a good one. You sent me. I think as the, as the Cowboys get ready for the Rams, something that I personally want to see, and whether it be the Rams or any team, is I want to see a more disciplined team in, in terms of penalties. And right, So Mike McCarthy talked about it earlier this week, saying that that was something he was honing in on, especially because those pre-snap penalties, those are killer. Those are self-inflicted wounds you just cannot afford to have in any game. So this week, really, eyes, all, eyes are all on those pre-snap penalties because – that was another reoccurring issue from last season. Uh, they nipped it in the butt. That was great. But let's see if they can continue to do that. So for me personally, that's something I'm looking at, but that's just because I'm really harsh when it comes to the penalties, guys. I don't know if you all know this. If you listen to Girls Talk, Boys Talk, we have a little game on there saying take a shot every time Jeff nagged about the penalties. So you can continue your drinking game this week uh, if uh, that continues to happen. But hopefully we don't have to do that. Someone needs to nag about these penalties that keep showing up. Um, we're talking to Jess Navarez of Pro Football Network right here on 105 through the fan. And Jess, uh, I know that the linebacking situation has been a little bit dire as obviously you lost to Marvion Overshaw in the preseason. You lose uh, Leighton Vanderesh during the course of this season. Now you're left with Damone Clark and you're left with, um, my goodness, name slides right out of my out of my head. And although I'm looking Marquise at number Bell. 14. There you go. Marquise Bell. Marquise yeah. Bell. Um, who has stepped up admirably um, for the for the time period where you do not have Leighton Van Der Esch. Is that going to be sufficient? I understand Marquis Bell has stepped up and played as well as you could possibly ask for him, but is that sufficient? Because I think when it comes to people asking for trades, one of those big places is linebacker for, for some level of depth and help. I think the depth is very concerning for the linebacker room just because it's such a young group. Um, and especially because you're talking about a guy like Leighton Van Der Esch. That is your communicator. That's your diagnose, uh, diagnoser. Is that a word? I think I just made that a word, but you know what I mean. He's going to diagnose the offense and he's going to communicate it. He has that green dot in his helmet. Um, and so something that stood out to me today, even just talking in the locker room to J. Ron Curse, is he's the one that takes over that responsibility if Leighton's out. So J. Ron has the green dot, something he's done before, something he's comfortable with but how highly he spoke of that linebacker room to feel confident in them and that there's not a drop-off uh, without Leighton in there and their ability to communicate up front, that's helpful to me. Coming from J. Ron Curse, who y'all know he's blunt, y'all know he's honest, he's going to say it how it is. He was very, very high on this young linebacker room. So, look, if you can make it happen, make it happen, but that, that doesn't mean to force anything. So I personally like uh, Damone Clark's production. I think that's something to – um, to note about is that he's worked hand in hand with Layton this entire time. Uh, keep in mind, him and Layton really went through the rehab process together because when Damone was rehabbing, guess who's right next to him at all of those sessions? Layton Vanderesh, because he wanted to be kind of showing the ropes and all of that. So, look, if you're going to stick with this mentality of believing in the next guy up, kind of have to do that all the way around. But look, if a good trade comes, do it. I'm not opposed to it. It just has to be something that's really worth it. And somebody that's going to get utilized. But, yeah, shout out to Damone Clark, Marquise Bell. Absolutely just a threat. He was talking about the other day on a conference call. Uh, somebody asked him, what do you do when a 300-pound guy's coming after you? And he said, attack it. Just, you know, casually. I wish, I wish I could be that cool if somebody <laughs> asked me that question. I'd be like, uh, run away. No, I love his mentality, and I think he's, a, he's one heck of a guy. All right, last question. I'm going to have some fun real quick before we let you go. Is the Cheesecake Factory the worst place to go on a first date? Oh my goodness, guys. Um, no, it's not. It is not. Personally, the only vendetta I have with the Cheesecake Factory is that I don't think cheesecake is a cake. And so it would open up the whole discussion that it's a pie. Mm -hmm. So that would be my argument. It should be called the Cheese Pie Factory, not the Cheesecake Factory. I but think, yeah, look, I think that sounds crazy, it though. Depends. I'm, a, I'm a priest for a second. It depends on how they're treating you. Keep your standards high. It has nothing to do with where they're taking you. They're treating you right. It should not matter where they're taking you, people. Come on. It's crazy. And if not, you can just shake them off. How about that? If not, you can just listen to Taylor Swift and get some dogs and you'll be fine. Not get some dogs. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, that's right. Jess Jess really does love the critters. That's right. That's I, right. I do. I have my two dogs. I'm surprised you don't hear one chewing on his bone right here next to me because that's exactly what he's doing. Jess, as always, thank you so much for the time. Really appreciate it. Tremendous stuff there as the Cowboys get ready to, to take on the Los Angeles Rams on Sunday afternoon. You can catch her what Monday through Thursday on Girls Talk Voice Talk, correct? Yep, Monday through Thursday, 4 o'clock Central Time on DallasCowboys.com. With uh, Nicole Hutchison and Aisha Morrison. Aisha there, Morrison. There and then on Monday, we have Kristen Scales. We love all of them. Fantastic ladies. I'm very blessed to get to work with them every day.